Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the <clears throat> matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I'm happy and privileged. I really want to thank God that He has enabled such wonderful moments in our life that we're able to sit here and discuss from the Word of God. Why such discussions are important, we have justified multiple times in our previous sessions too. This is when you will get the light, right? When you say light, light's speciality is it separates you from darkness. And the more you are separated from darkness, the more you are staying away from darkness, better it is for you to always um, understand the real who you are. So if you're not able to understand the real who you are, then God is not even able to help you. Even God is not able to help you. That's right English. Okay. So many of us live in complacency that all is well with me. <clears throat> but for example, one fine day you wake up and you feel some aches in your body. You go and get it checked up. Then you will realize, okay, that you are diagnosed with certain conditions, certain sickness. Some of them even happens to be dreadful diseases. And... The good news is medical science helps you to get treated and then they give you tablets and some of them are short term, some of them are long term. Yeah, long term conditions like for example, you know, thyroxine hormone deficiencies and thyroid problems and all those are long term, BP and diabetes, sometimes it's a long term. You got to keep it under check. Some of them are short term where yeah, little aches in your um, in your muscles, probably you need a little bit of strengthening exercises. Three months down the line, you should be fine. Right? So when you discover is when the, the, the physicians or the orthopedicians or whomever it is, they are able to treat your body and get you to the better side. But if you would say, all is well with me, yet still body is aching what to do and all that. Yeah, you, yeah, well, there are a lot of cult groups where they say going to doctor is a sin according to the Bible. Who said that? There is nothing like that. Uh, Luke, brother Luke, who wrote the Bible itself, was a doctor. But still, when you go to the doctor, go in prayer, right? Even doctors cannot fix. There could be medical negligence. And pray about God's guidance. That's always needed. Do everything in prayer, Bible says. Yeah. Make your request known to God. Be anxious for nothing. But yeah, talk to God and make your request known to God. And therefore, God is able to help you. How many of you are with me? Right? So <clears throat> that's why it's very, very important to read the Bible. Therefore, you know what is expected of you and what is expected, what you can expect from God in return. All right. A warm welcome to this series where we are talking through the subject eschatology. Sorry about the numbers. I don't know whether it's lesson 28 or 29. Somewhere we are getting towards the mark of 30. Right. And it's been a long time since we have kicked off this episode number one on eschatology, which talks about the second coming of Jesus and what are all the upcoming events following that second coming event is also briefly being discussed or even I would say detailed in detail, not briefly. We are discussing in detail. And that's why it's going to take us a long way. Yeah. So it's not about numbers. It's not an intention always to drag, but it's our intention to always give you that comprehensive coverage on what Bible talks. That's called as detailed Bible study. That's why I'm, I take a lot of pride in the ministries that God had enabled in our lives that very few people, you know, go to this extent, this level, and they research the Bible. Uh, I'm not saying people are not there, but very few are there. And you don't get to reach these, I mean, you don't get these subjects to reach your doorstep. But today we have a wonderful platform, YouTube channel, and in internet, we are also uploading in other few channels too. So, yeah, you know, we are able to reach out to souls. Okay, I hope you are paying enough attention to every video that we are releasing. Um, even otherwise, God bless you. Uh, please share these details with as many as whom you could. Eschatology connects with many other events. So we have done. We are done with the second coming event, the first event, and uh, we spoke about many things like. Um, uh, parousia, presence of God, apocalypses, the revelation, prophecies from the word of God, 
and the god's return and glory epiphania all these are greek terminologies and we discussed this in the previous sessions so almost 10 hours we spent only on the second coming event why because it's very important for all of us to know how this event happens nobody knows when it will happen but how it will happen right uh, or when is the time ripen enough so that will cover in episode 2 what are the 14 signs which justifies that the second coming of jesus can happen at any point of time the time is ripen enough already and you and i really need to be prepared to receive jesus from above for the second time he is going to land on earth in the mount of olives his foot shall uh, be set on the mount of olives and uh, episode 3 we will talk about the tribulation period the great tribulation and what happens during those seven years is what what we want to also discuss briefly so this is how we have structured and organized and we will take you through why because these are end times already end times we don't have time <clears throat> while we have spent a lot of time in various other concepts in the bible yeah many many things day of atonement law of authority law of obedience law of disobedience so many things we spoke stunts and if you were to start if you're a newcomer to this channel if you were to start listening to our messages it will take roughly around 3 4 years for you to finish everything so much is there but compared to everything else we have spoken this is very important because we are in the end times and already we have done a short series on jesus is coming soon almost 7 hours of teaching we have done long ago one and a half years ago i think and now i had a strong emphasis in my heart that we have to continue this conversation so the second event what we are going to discuss in the subject of es- eschatology would be the uh, resurrection of the dead yeah how many of you are with me so far resurrection of the dead yeah christ is the first born from the dead and uh, the first fruits of the resurrection of all believers happens and what is this resurrection what is the subject it's going to be a very very detailed conversation the reason is because a lot of confusions are happening today in christendom and across the world and people who don't believe in the resurrection were sadducees pharisees had a strong belief in the subject of resurrection therefore they couldn't disagree with jesus at the same time they couldn't agree with jesus where they kind of ended up in conflict was they could not accept they accept everything that jesus spoke but they could not accept that you are calling yourself a son of god you are calling that you are yahweh you were with god and father in you and you and father you are saying you are not different from yahweh and you are saying i was there even before abraham was formed in his mother's womb and uh, how dare you insult our father yeah father of israel is abraham and uh, they got offended and uh, that's 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 the only reason for conflict between jesus and the jews but otherwise they had a strong agreement on whatever he spoke from resurrection perspective they never accepted second coming so without second coming there is no resurrection that's a problem right that's why we are taking you through this uh, chronological order um, as as a, as a description therefore you have every uh source of information in your mind that as why you should should not believe this kind of myth so just to start with some of the basics right we are, we will take you through a lot of scriptures in the bible today not today and also the upcoming sessions i do not know how long it's going to take for the second event the resurrection of the dead is the second event we entitled it that way not me actually in the bible itself it's entitled that way i'll be taking you through a lot of scriptures therefore you have a comprehensive understanding our intention is to get you out of confusions misconceptions if you're already uh, having lot of clarity no problem brother give me a chance let me explain it to you it's it's good to discuss bible it's good to hear although you know something you never know there could be a uh, new uh, revelation from god and it's always going to help you so do not be negligent do not ignore please so what happened is immediately after adam and eve sinned in the garden of eden we all know this in genesis 3 and uh, i'm just starting from the basics if we start from the ancient history then it's easy to understand things right and the sentence of death was handed down to them and their descendants and humanity began to face the question is there at all life after death yeah because until then the original way how god had designed this world was a world without death so imagine if 
the serpent would not have deceived Eve and Eve would not have offered that fruit or ate after eating that fruit herself, offering that fruit to her husband Adam. Can you imagine that what would be the age of Adam and Eve? 6,000 plus years. And Jesus would not have been introduced in Genesis 3.15. Why? Because sin had not entered into this world. There wasn't a need for second Adam to come and suffer and take all the curses of the world on him. And he died on our behalf. Therefore, we are redeemed. And that, that's a prophecy even you see it in the book of Job. I don't know from where he got that revelation. Probably from above, right? My Redeemer lives and my Redeemer would come and probably he heard about the promises to the nation of Israel. Israel was just given birth. Actually, Job and Jacob, they lived in this during the same times. And there is a belief that Job got married. The second marriage happened with Jacob's daughter, Dina, who had gone through this defilement and all that, right? So she got def um, she, she went through a problem. And you know, her brothers came and killed all the guys uh, in, that, in that land and all that. That is a belief, but that is it's this little outside Bible. Therefore, I would not emphasize too much on that. Okay. Now, these guys clearly understood <clears throat> that there is, there is the end on the world, but nobody had an idea what is this life after death. Or nobody had an idea in the sense nobody even thought about it. Why? Because it was not revealed. It was not prophesied. It was not... Um, it was not, what is say, made transparent. We can go through various uh, languages, various uh, subjects and anatomy, but all constitutes to the same meaning or all, all boils down to the same meaning. There wasn't a life after death. This was the understanding of the mankind. Talking from the perspective of Adam and Eve. And uh, even for God, the Father, when he created the world, there wasn't anything for him beyond that life after death. And there wasn't death at all because that's the way how we designed this world. In the cool of the days, the idea was to have fellowship with the mankind. Imagine if, again, that sin had not entered into the world. You and I are able to move, or move across with the Lord. And this place itself was created. What is the other name for the third heaven? It's paradise. Paradise is what? The Eden Garden, which was shifted to a different place where God the Father was there walking across. And that place is now abolished on earth and it's called a Zion. It's a valley kind of thing. No, no, no habitation, no plantation, nothing will go there, grow there. God, God erased that place. And the whole idea for God the Father was be fruitful and be, be multiplied and I want to spend time. Now God's intention was to not sit at heaven at his office, home office or something like that, but his office would be there. Probably he would go there and rest for some time, but majority of the time he would want to spend here on earth. And that's why you see that there was no mention about even his son during the first two chapters. His son was there. He was the darling of the heaven. Probably Jesus would continue to exist there. Right? It was he and the Holy Spirit. You will see them being mentioned there. Come, let us go and make man of our own image. Genesis 1.27, Genesis 2.7, all this you can read. Yeah. So... When the sin entered into the world, someone will someone will have to take the blame on himself to nullify that sin. Only then, you know, mankind will have something called a salvation. And therefore, eternal life was brought into existence. Because why? Already the world was designed for eternal life. Etern in eternity, you live with the Father. That's the whole idea. And that's the way how the... Eden Garden, which existed in Ezekiel 28 during the times of Lucifer, or was also designed. You understand? It's all about eternity. There wasn't any death. But sin entered when this fellow became devil. And then he was able to deceive. And so God abolished the earth and he filled it with water and all that. And I do God, God only knows how long it was filled with water. Researchers are saying few million years or something like that. But we do not know the exact fact. Why? Because the age of the soil is roughly around 3.54 billion years. And uh, nobody knows. And the age of universe is 13.54 billion years. And uh, uh, yeah, something like that. So we, we do not know. I know about science a little bit, but not about the exact facts. Because God has hidden it from the eyes of men. And it's unimportant. It's not significant, right? So leave that aside. Now, coming to the fact of this life after death. See, if there is no life after that, where is the concept of resurrection? Yeah, it's tightly coupled, isn't it? 
So when there is no death, why resurrection? And what created the death? For the wages of sin is death. Bible says in Romans 6.23. So sin entered and the man was dead spiritually. He lost his glory. Therefore God said, yeah, you will die now. Your body shall return to earth. Your spirit will be taken back by me. And your soul will make its way either to paradise, which I will shift it to a different place. And... Or, or it will make its way to the place of torment called as hell. So all these concepts were newly introduced. You want to know more about it? We have so many sessions done in this perspective. Body, mind, spirit, soul series. And uh, we spoke about um, something else. Um, yeah, in the truth about the cross series, also about resurrection when we described. We have explained about this paradise. Jesus, uh, see all, right? You heard, you keep hearing the word called as see all. And you will see that also mentioned in the book of Jonah. Uh, I was in Seol and all that. So that's a place where the, the, the dead souls are resting. So I, I don't want to get into the concept so quickly, but we will do it one, one after the other. right? In this, session, in this session, I mean to say, in this session, in the sense, on the second event, resurrection of the dead, we will ensure that you get some glimpse or idea about this. You should know. Only then you will understand. So enough of prefacing about the basics right you know now you have a fair understanding like how the uh, resurrection um, came into picture and many people during until what is say until the book of moses was written probably while moses moses was writing those laws i don't think nobody practiced it nobody was so fluent nobody even not nobody most of them didn't understand and that's why you see sin was reigning in israel all the way until first king second kings first chronicles second chronicles and all the way uh, roughly 500 years ago i mean before jesus was born is when the world started to seek the lord enough of these sinful deeds enough of we uh, killing bulls and goats and lambs and sheep and this and that so we we are we are sick and tired why because we are not able to overcome most of the sins if not at least one sin for sure we were not able to overcome the lust of the flesh yeah Lust means it's always tightly coupled to sex, not, not just that, right? Greed for money, everything is, you know, connected to lust. Everyone, every one of them, in fact, at least one rich young ruler guy was able to fulfill all the commandments, but not one. He had that lust for money, that greed for money, and Jesus pointed out that. So there were a lot of uh, old covenant saints, but they all died as someone who had who were not able to fulfill the commandments. And of course, they had not heard Jesus, therefore... From the old covenant perspective, yes, they got a chance. Jesus, um, after he was uh, dead, those three days, the, you know, some he visited the people, um, and the, and then the saints of God got a chance to hear him, and uh, they 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 just got an opportunity to repent of their sins, and they were cleansed. But people who were born after Jesus had come and gone. You and I know have no escape. Why? Because we have been given the powers in the name of Jesus to overcome lust, like how Jesus overcame. And that's why he was, he was resurrected by the Father as there was no blemish in him. He was sin-free. He was born sin-free. He lived sin-free. It's not because some supernatural powers were given to him from above. No, no, no. He acquired those powers through his lifestyle and practices. And that is what is written in the New Covenant as laws and commandments. Jesus himself preached all these things to us. And then sending his Holy Spirit through his disciples and through his apostles like Paul. 1050 laws and commandments are there. And that is only to help us. And Jesus spoke and wrote what he pre what he practiced and not that what he preached and tried to practice. No, he wrote what he had practiced. You understand? He spoke on what he had practiced. Okay, now let's come back to the original question. Is there life after death? Yes, certainly. Not before sin came to this world, but after sin came to this world. And the patriarch uh, Job put, put it this way, right? Job 14, 14. If a person dies... Will they live again? Job is asking these questions because those days, you know, Moses was not even born. Job is the first book in the Bible. You know that, right? Job is the first book. Maybe, you know, you shouldn't go by the order of what has been put in the gospel or the Holy Bible, right? Uh, the order is different. Will I live again? Job is asking this question. Even he was not clear. So the Bible answers this question loud and clear. The dead shall live again. Yeah. But 
the dead will be again divided sheep and goat you can see in Matthew 25 the sheep will live with God um, they they will rest in paradise and after white throne judgment they will be transferred to the kingdom of heaven new heaven and earth will be formed and nobody knows how it go, how it's going to look like Revelation 21 and 22 gives you an essence that's it nothing much you will see there but the goats who had not been following the voice of the shepherd who have been all not following the shepherd's instructions have fallen apart they've they part ways with with, the, with their shepherd and therefore they don't belong to his kingdom and they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 19, 20, 21, Revelation 20, 10, Revelation 20, uh, 15. You can read all of these about the lake of fire. It's mentioned very clearly there. Right. So the Bible answers this question. The dead will live again. One of the great doctrines of the Christian faith is the resurrection of the dead. And the Apostle Paul declares it this way in Romans chapter 8, verses 23 and 24. Shall I read it for you? Okay, then you need to give me some time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm quick enough. I got my new specs and I'm just trying to get adjust to this. Uh, so bear with me. Huh? Romans 8, 23 to 24. This bifocal lens is so confusing. So I'm planning to split these glasses, one for reading and one for uh, the long sight. I don't know how many of you are having bifocal lenses and yet having no problem. Wow, wonderful are you. <laughs> okay, uh, Romans 8, 23 to 24. And not only they, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Who is able to groan? Groaning means what? Grieving, right? You're pain. You're in pain. For example, you hit your legs somewhere. You dashed it against, especially the big toe when it dashes against a stone or a rock. My goodness, how many of you have such experiences? Huh? During, I was a footballer long ago. Uh, footballer means I was not playing at district level or something like that for fun. But we we do we do have matches or something like that. So when we kick that ball, right? Sometimes what happens is um, if you don't position your toe strong enough. It gets twisted or it gets hit back by this football. Some footballs are really heavy. They're made of, uh, you know, strong, heavy leather. And, oh, that pain is like groaning. Makes you groan. My goodness. Finished. You have to rest your foot for some time. And uh, people who will feel the sin in them, they will groan in their spirit. That's what Bible says. Yeah. Groan within ourselves. Why? Eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. We don't want to live in sin. Why? Because if we continue to live in sin, we will never have that life after death. We will never go through this resurrection process. You will never be part of God's kingdom. This is what is called as groaning in your spirit. Hmm? But 24. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what? He sees. Very confusing, right? I preached this many times. For we were saved in this hope. While we took your baptism, water baptism and all that, you had that hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Why? Because when you enter into the world after baptism, you become targets to the devil. You go through a lot of uh, tribulations, temptations, this and that. So a lot of problems in life. And what happens? You are put to test. Your faith is put to test. Many of us fail. Many of us fall down. And then what happens? The original hope you received on the day of water baptism where you have accepted Christ to repentance and you reconcile with the Father in heaven, you're not having it anymore in you. <laughs> for why does one still hope for what he sees? Why? Why you should hope? Then what happens is you are not going to be let down by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continues to grieve for you and pray for you. The intercessor is at work. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, Mark 16, last two verses, and Romans 8, 26, with a groaning spirit, even the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. And what happens is slowly you will start to think how to overcome. And God will show you a lot of verses. Holy Spirit will lead you through scriptures. Yeah, he's a rewarder of faith. You must believe God is existing. Therefore, even the righteous fall seven times. God is able to lift you up. So many verses, God is going to bring that encouragement. Yeah, God is going to bring that courage. Many, many, many a times, you know, we get into, uh, we are panicked and we, we, we are paranoid and we do not know what to do. And so many of us go through this situation, not just you, not just me, many of us listening to me, isn't it? And who builds that courage? Who builds that hope once again? It's the Holy Spirit. That's why Bible says that 
we need to work with the Holy Spirit as our helper and who teaches us from the scriptures. John 14, 14, John 14, John, sorry, John 14, 16, John 14, 26. If you read all these verses, you will understand. Therefore, once again, the hope is built in you. Therefore, you do not lose that resurrection, that life in eternity. What a wonderful paraphrase, isn't it? So each believer is presently waiting for the redemption of their body. The changes that God has promised to make to each one who believes. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. You definitely know, right? We have preached this also in one of our uh, sermons in this series itself. Right? Transformation of spirit and renewal of mind. When you present your body as living sacrifices to God and he's able to bring that change in you. He's able to transform. He's able to renew your mind, rejuvenate your process, cleanse all and flush out every bad thing. Every unclean spirit will be wiped off your body. They will not have the uh, place of existence in your body. Your body belongs to the Holy Ghost. Your body is transformed to the holy temple of God. You're all with me. So, what what is this, you know, what is this death? Death is the end or it's not the end? Yeah, when, we, when you are dead and gone, I told you, right, Ecclesiastes 12, 7, your body returns back to the dust. From dust you were made and dust you shall return. God the Father speaks that to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3. And after the, you know, the sin entered into this world. And yes, they deserve for the judgment. Why? Because they committed... An act of disobedience and how many instructions were given to them? Only one. Hey, don't eat the fruit. Is it a big deal? They disobeyed it, man. Because why? They never were able to foresee the consequences and God did not reveal the consequences. He just told you will be dead. And after that, when they learned the consequences, there was no sin in Adam and Eve until they were dead and gone. They lived their life in, life in repentance, in sadness and grief. That's, that's what the scribes were saying and there definitely there is a strong belief that Adam and Eve are living in um, the paradise. They are with God. They are with God. Not like uh, Solomon during he began very well and towards the end he slipped off. Similarly, King uh, who's that? Uh, King Saul began very well, slipped off. But Samson uh, began okay. It's an average beginning, right? But then when God came, he finished everything. He would go to the prostitutes' house and all that. But towards the end, he did a fantabulous job, right? He walked into repentance and that's why Adam, Eve, uh, all these guys, you know, uh, Samson, I have a strong, tremendous belief they are with the father. They did the right thing. Hours before death doesn't matter. Years before death doesn't matter, but they have done the right thing. Now, don't get an idea. Oh, hours before death, let me see what I can do about. Hey, you never know. As you're thinking, your life may just go away. Yeah, nobody knows how long you will exist on earth. That's why you need to thank God for every single day. It's grace, grace, grace. Grace period is extended. So is death the end or not the end? One of the scribes says that, you know, death is not the end. Though our body dies, the spirit or soul never dies. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 again is a typical example. The body ceases to function, but not the inner person. Inner person is still alive. Soul is immortal. Body is mortal. Correct? It returns to earth. Our, 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 our spirit is also immortal, but it returns to God. Yeah, our spirit is the one which gives that breath. We are, we are breathing the spirit of God. Hence, physical death does not end life. It is only one step in the ongoing and eternal process of uh, conscious life. So I'm going to set some preface for our next session and with that we close. What is this resurrection of body? What are the different attributes within this resurrection of body? What are the nomenclatures? What do you understand? How is it fragmented into different sections? Therefore, we can go through one after the other and we get a comprehensive idea. We stitch, uh, our, we, we stitch the ideas, in the, not the ideas, right? The, we stitch the promises and the revelations in the scriptures together. Therefore, you get a comprehensive view of the subject called as resurrection of the body. So the Bible in both the Testaments, Old and New, promises that the dead will rise. Yes? Who was not aware were the people who were existing before Moses. Before Moses. Yeah, not much of 
the revelation towards in the in genesis if you see there is not much revelation about the second coming of christ or about resurrection second life life after death and all that yeah but yes the world will be redeemed the redeemer will come he will save you from sin salvation was promised in genesis 3:15 itself it was told but as moses is being directed by god you will see all of this is being revealed one after the other and we are going to talk about it yeah so this is actually done through four different ways or four ways put together constitutes to this resurrection uh, as a subject as a concept what are they they are by direct statement certain things are very direct they are not even indirectly told or as a uh, as a riddle or a puzzle or figurative language in book of daniel book of revelation it's more a figurative language no it will not be something like that it's direct and we will go through those what are they what are those direct statements and where can you see that and the second thing is the symbolical figurative language symbolical representations right symbolical representations are uh, many times mentioned in the uh, bible um, and those symbolic representations are very important for you to understand um, why because those are nothing but the uh, you know the clear representations of how you could expect things in a calculative method how you know it's very nice to know right sometimes god will make us use our brains <laughs> yeah those that shall ha- hate mathematics it's not that they are brainless just that they are denying to use their brains wisdom knowledge and that's why they hate mathematics sluggish attitude nothing else so sometimes god doesn't talk directly indirectly he leaves certain truth and evidences and facts behind that for you those who shall, those who shall dig it hard and they will hit the rock bottom and they will find the treasure box thirdly through predictive prophecy there are a lot of predictive prophecies and what are they yeah it may happen may not happen it's not like that but these were like these are like associated to the signs given to us so what are they we, we need to find that out and fourthly by the resurrection of christ his only son christ will be sent and his body will be resurrected on the third day and jesus himself spoke about that all of us know that you demolish this temple it will be raised on the third day he spoke about his body at the same time the prophecy was applicable to the temple of solomon he also told that not a one not a single stone will be left in this temple that also happened in ad 70 yeah the romans came and demolished it okay so these are the four different ways we could contemplate and we will be doing this this is still prefacing right i will be slowly getting into the details one after the other we have a long way to go resurrection is an important concept trust me okay and that's why sadhusis never qualify to be part of resurrection because they have rejected pharisees also don't qualify to be part of resurrection why because they rejected jesus sadhusis rejected the concept itself forget it <laughs> Pharisees rejected Jesus without him there is no salvation without salvation there is no resurrection there is no eternity because why sin entered in this world man how do you demolish sin how do you overcome how do you nullify sin in your carnal system without the blood blood of lamb cannot do that you yourself admitted didn't you and that's why you sought for messiah messiah came and went and you're still waiting for whom that is their problem scribes no they always need signs they are nothing but most of them are greeks and all that you know you know the greeks right very intellectual people but they need evidences they need the theorems they need formulas ah oh, this equation is not right and all that no bible doesn't talk everything by evidence you know bible says that you should believe that he is god and he is the rewarder of faith in hebrews 11:6 and not necessarily god will have to prove things to you and therefore you believe no sometimes he doesn't have to prove yet yet you believe and then you will see uh you know things that were not existing will become existent in your in 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 front of you you got to create things by faith as how god created by faith let there be light light came up okay all right that's enough for today i think you got a good uh, preface of what we are getting into we will meet again in the next session and we will continue from where we left god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you lord you are teaching us through uh, you are out you are taking us through a very important study eschatology itself is important in that resurrection is very very important if we miss our chances in this resurrection lord we will never get a chance in the second life the life after death is very important than the life that we live here on earth thank you lord for teaching us everything so vividly and clearly 
thank you for every effort that you have instilled in me that i'm able to be your instrument and thank you for my brother and my sisters who have dedicated their time to listen to these sessions and help them lead them by your side guide them you are our good shepherd in jesus name we pray amen thank you for your time and please subscribe to our channel do not forget to listen to all the videos that we are releasing a lot of efforts are going i'm a part time minister in the midst of so many problems sometimes you know very tough to manufacture time yet we dedicate our time i've been doing this very sincerely because god called me for this uh, work and i definitely want to do this for god and his people and so should you be share these details with whomever you know yeah all that you need to do is at the one click right you got to just share them the channel details one click they get into the life of salvation who knows that's exactly what somebody wanted for years and they get it preached through this media okay and continue to remember me and our ministries in your prayers we need your prayers god bless you take care i'll meet you soon in the next session